Looking back to all that has occurred to me since that eventful day, I am scarcely able to believe in the reality of my adventures. They were truly so wonderful that even now I am bewildered when I think of them. This is the opening of one of Jules Verne's most famous novels. Indeed, the first half of the 20th century saw the flowering of many amazing expeditions and brave explorers who challenged our notion of what is possible. Dr Livingston, I presume? This phrase might have been a fabrication for the press, but what is undeniable is that Scottish pioneer David Livingston remains one of the most popular heroes of late Victorian Britain. A hundred years ago, David Livingstone discovered the magnificent Victoria Falls on the Zambezi River. Today, at his memorial on the edge of the falls, his grandson, Dr. Hubert Wilson, unveils a plaque recalling the achievements of the great Scottish missionary. Driven by evangelical reasons, Livingstone explored the African interior between 1852 and 1856, mapping almost the entire course of the River Zambezi, and becoming the first European to ever see the Muzi Uatunya, or as he renamed them, the Victoria Falls. A failed explorer, or an unfairly dismissed adventurer? There's still controversy about this matter. In 1909, Frederick Albert Cook claimed to have reached the North Pole with only two Inuit men. His account was widely believed initially, but it started to be discredited by Cook's rival polar explorer, Robert Peary, who is now accepted as the first ever white man to arrive at the North Pole. The truth is that Cook provided little and contradicting evidence of his achievement, and he died believed to be a fraud. Regardless, it is fair to remember that Cook did discover Meehan Island in the Canadian Arctic, and what is more, he contributed to saving the lives of the crew of the ship Belhika, a failed expedition that became the first one to ever spend winter in the Antarctic. Cook was the ship's doctor. In the early 20th century, the race to conquer the South Pole was intense. No man had set foot on the Antarctic continent until Norwegian explorer and Belhika expedition veteran Roald Amundsen succeeded on the 14th of December 1911. Leading a team of five men and 16 dogs, Amundsen had to face mutiny by one of his colleagues who abandoned the mission and who years later committed suicide because he regretted having quit at such a crucial moment in history. Years later, after his South Pole success, in 1926, Amundsen and another 15 men made the first ever crossing of the Arctic in the airship Norga. As his nature commanded, Amundsen continued exploring, and he died in a crash while flying in a rescue mission in the Arctic. His body was never found, but his spirit will be remembered forever. On the 29th of May 1953, New Zealander Edmund Hillary and Nepalese mountaineer Tensing Norgay became the first ever men to reach the summit of the highest peak on Earth, Mount Everest. At that time, there was an increasing interest in climbing the summit of the world, and only one expedition was allowed per year by the Chinese and Nepalese governments. After a failed Swiss expedition in 1952, the British attempt, led by John Hunt, totalling 400 men, was allowed a try. Only Edmund Hillary and Tensing Norgay made it to the summit, becoming two of the most famous people of the 20th century. Now he tells of his feelings when he reached the top. Well, I think personally my main one was a relief that we got there. <laughs> Possibly the pilot of the most famous flight in history. If you ask most people, they will tell you that Charles Lindbergh was the first person to fly across the Atlantic in an aeroplane. As usual, the answer is a little more complex. In 1913, the Daily Mail offered a prize of £10,000 to the first aviator to cross the Atlantic, but World War I exploded and the quest was put on hold. It was in the decade of the 1920s that the challenge started to get serious contestants. The truth is that several expeditions and 18 people crossed the Atlantic by aeroplane before him, but it was Charles Lindbergh who did the first solo, non-stop flight across the ocean in his 1927 journey from New York to Paris, becoming a global icon and the symbol for the world aviator. In the 1940s, Norwegian explorer and writer Thor Heyerdahl believed that the people from South America could have been the first settlers of Polynesia in pre-Columbian times, before the Spanish conquistadors arrived on the continent. Heyerdahl was so convinced that he embarked on an epic expedition to replicate the journey, from Peru to French Polynesia, using a raft built with the same techniques that presumably the native Incas would have used many centuries ago. The trip was an odyssey of 6,980 kilometres over 101 days, facing violent waves and the threat of terrifying sharks of the Pacific Ocean. 
However, the Contiki expedition was a major success, finally reaching the coast and proving that Heyerdahl was right. Less known than her contemporary pal Amelia Earhart, Amy Johnson was a true aviatrix and adventurer. The British pilot used to work in London as a secretary in the 1920s, when she was introduced to flying as a hobby. Very quickly she gained a pilot's A licence and became the first British woman to obtain a ground engineer's C licence in 1929. Supported by her father, she embarked on the trip that would make her famous worldwide. In 1930, she became the first woman pilot to fly solo from England to Australia. She left Croydon on the 5th of May 1930 and landed in Darwin 19 days later. From that moment onwards, Amy Johnson embarked on many flying quests, including her contribution as a pilot during World War II. Unfortunately, she perished in 1941 after she bailed out as her aircraft crashed in the Thames estuary. Tragically, her body was never recovered from the sea, but her achievements are written in the pages of history. William Beebe was an American naturalist, ornithologist, marine biologist, entomologist, explorer and author. That gives us a grasp of how diverse and rich his life was. Beebe is mainly remembered for his expeditions for the New York Zoological Society, particularly documenting the world's pheasants around the globe, in an adventure of over 17 months in 1909. But he then turned his mind towards the depths of the ocean. On board the vessel he named the Bathysphere, Beebe and engineer Otis Barton became the first people to observe deep sea animals in their native environment. That's right, from 1930 to 1934 the two explorers conducted a series of pioneering dives off the coast of Nonsuch Island in Bermuda. His discoveries revolutionised underwater exploration and set the bar for many more sea adventurers to come. You may think that the world would have just stayed the same without these fine explorers. After all, they didn't necessarily build or make anything. However, it is fair to say that thanks to them, our notion of our planet and of ourselves is wider and brighter. <laughs>